Hello, surprise. Hello, friends. I'm going live on a Wednesday night to celebrate the holidays. I'm super excited. What better to do than create art and mixed media and then make something fun just for the fun of it during the holidays. And it is a way for me to give back to all of my amazing community with giveaways and teaching some fun art techniques. It's gonna be so much fun. So hello friends, uh, happy to have you here. I, I know that it'll probably be a smaller group joining us because you know I decided to do this last night <laughs> and kind of organized all of it. But I have been sitting here drawing this afternoon and playing and I think you're gonna have lots of fun. So hello, welcome friends, happy to have you here. If you are new to my YouTube or Facebook, hi, I'm Vicki Booten, and I like to make art with my creative community, uh, the Vibu Crew. So happy to have you here if you're here for the first time. Happy to see lots of my friends returning. Hi, Deb, Diane. Hello, Deb, Jojo, Suzanne, Amanda. I saw Natalie is here. I saw Irene here. Hi, Helen. Hi, Carol, how are you? Lots and lots of friends from all over the world. I love that. Are you ready to make some stuff tonight? This drawing class last year, we did Christmas trees, but we're changing it up and doing some different trees. As I was sitting there, I'm like, I could have done six classes of just drawing. So for sure, I think this is going to be a class, a, like a little impromptu class next year. Um, is just doodling and drawing and making your own die cuts because I really think that there's there's like a lot that could be done with that. So I'm very excited about that. And I doodled some different trees. I painted them. I have an idea. And everything I'm creating in the next six days, I'm going to make two or three of from the same technique. So I'll teach a technique. And then I'm going to make cards that have pockets that I can put photos in. So it is a little mini album that are tag form in four by six, four by seven, that are all gonna be pockets and flip outs and all different things that are gonna go in the little, uh, I have like Paige used this last year, pretty sure that's who I saw use it. And I sent my friend Greta to uh, Target because we were in COVID times and I couldn't go to the States and got this little sleigh, which is perfect for a little tag album. So the whole idea is just going to be mixed media that I can throw in here and I can switch it out every year if I want to. And then I could just put the uh, finished project on a jump ring or whatever. If you guys remember last year, we made this guy, which I absolutely still adore. So every year we do something, right? And last year it was with all these shaker boxes. My favorite being, are you ready for it? Is this one that looks like there's little ornaments in the box. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I'm gonna have to grab a drink, I'm choking on you guys. So I don't know if you guys remember that from last year. Let me grab a drink. <coughs> oh my goodness. That was crazy. Sorry about that. So we made this last year. This year, I decided let's do six lessons doing different things. And from all of it, I'm going to make my little tag book. You could make cards. You could make six by eight pages to put into your December daily documenting December. If that's what you do, some of them I'll probably make multiple projects out of. Or you could do it on a layout or just doodle and play along for fun. So tonight we're doodling on Friday at eight o'clock. I'm pulling out the gel plate and we're gonna do some masking and fun. So just if you're thinking ahead, you will want some kind of snowflake die cuts. Okay, so even if you just cut them out of printer paper like we did back in school, whatever you wanna do with that. And then just always keep in mind the scale that you're using. So if you're going to be doing it for cards or whatever you're doing it for, uh, make sure that you keep the scale in mind so you don't want big, huge snowflakes if you're doing it for a little card. Okay. Hello, friends. Love my decorations. Yes, I did this for the Evergreen and Holly weekend, which I'm very excited. I was telling Natalie today, 
I don't know where my album is, but I've started putting my pages in. So I will be sharing those. I've put photos in and everything. I love it. So very fun. So I'm going to flip the camera around. This is, we got, we've got work to do tonight. And I know it is a Wednesday night. So for some of you, it's a school night or work tomorrow. So I want to keep it very concise. And then remember that there's going to be a giveaway that I'm going to post on Facebook. So I'm going to post the giveaway on Facebook. So it will be on just my regular Facebook page. But if you leave comments on the YouTube uh, channel as well, on my YouTube channel here, then you will have two chances to win the giveaway. So tonight's giveaway that I will post, well, you have to leave the comments in the regular comment section, not in this live chat um, after I'm done going live. And then I'm gonna go over and about 15, 20 minutes after the video ends, I will have the giveaway posted. So somewhere in the middle of this video, I'm going to give you a song name, a holiday song name that you need to post in there because then, you know, got to You got to watch the video. So I'll put it in there, but you guys will see it right as soon as people start commenting. But hopefully you see the value in watching it and want to play along. Anyway, if you're watching after the fact, this is recorded live. So the uh, giveaway, uh, I will do all the draws on um, December the 27th. Okay, all the draws are going to be on December 27th. So you get a chance to comment on all of them. There's going to be six giveaways. Uh, it will be open to the U.S. and Canada unless you're international and you want to pay your shipping. Um, I will happily send it to you if you want to cover the shipping costs. So you can decide that if you want to leave a comment and it will be fun. Just randomly we'll choose. Tonight will be the post that I'm going to do is a huge Tim Holtz giveaway let me grab it so i just kept filling the bag this is the little baggie and i just kept filling it with tons of stuff and in here as well is the bird crazy stamp set signed by tim he had given this to me for a class and i was cleaning up and found it it's signed in 2015. so look at it. it's vintage i love it and then a whole bunch of distress inks i it will be very fun. It'll be a very fun giveaway. A whole bunch of the new Christmas. It'll be good. So that will be the giveaway for tonight. Some of them are huge. Some of them are going to be really big. So it will be very fun. And uh, without further ado, let's flip the camera and talk about what we're going to be drawing tonight. So I feel like everyone can participate. All you need is a pencil. A marker or black pen of some type that is um, permanent so it won't run when we put water on it you have two options if yours is not permanent then you would draw after you watercolor so you do have options and some scissors I'm using foundations paper tonight you could definitely do these on watercolor paper even cardstock if you don't use too much water and then for like I said and then I have my whole bin of everything Christmas that I will start embellishing and uh, finishing the tag. So let's do the things. I'm using some distress ink. I have a stencil that's going to represent snow. It's going to be so much fun. So let's flip the camera and get started. I told you guys, this one is a favorite. This is a favorite. You guys really enjoy the drawing of things. So I'm very excited. Let's do the things. So look at, I even did these today and I absolutely adore them. And look at, made my own die cuts. Look how pretty are these gonna be? Look how pretty these are, how pretty they are going to look on my first little tag. I love it. So we're gonna do some different versions tonight. And then really tonight will be all about kind of doodling. And then uh, we'll see how far we go when I go to share the art, because then I'm going to do my first entry is going to be this background that I'm going to stencil and mask and then flick some snow on it. And then it's going to go in my tag, little tag collection. 
Any questions before we get started? And it's so fun, friends. You guys are going to be able to do this. You watch because the scribblier and doodlier you do it, the better. I'm just putting my um, thing I hoist the thing up with so I can read your comments. Okay, we're good to go. Where'd I get this tag from? This is from scrapbook.com. I might have to grab a second pop while we're here, friends, for some reason. I feel like a cough coming on. So it is scrapbook.com. This is the Slimline Dies. Uh, this one is called uh, Nested Ticket. So I cut these ahead of time. I know poor Natalie, she'll go and find all the share sale links. And then I'll be like, oh, this is all I'm using. And then I end up using a whole bunch of stuff. And she's like, dude, what the heck? Yeah. What colors do we need and what kind of paper? Foundations paper. And I just grabbed a whole bunch of different green distress ink. A whole bunch of green distress ink. But look how pretty these are going to look. Right? It's going to be very fun to do like a little layered tag. And then why I'm happy to be doing it in the container so you could use a box whatever you're using the scale is going to be dependent on the width of the box mine is sorry <laughs> let me turn the volume off on my phone mine is four inches so everything i'm going to create in here is four inches but if you're using just a gift box so you go to the dollar store dollar tree and find something it will be awesome so yeah, we'll link it. I have all my share sale links are on there. So if you guys are going to go shopping at um, scrapbook.com, please use the links. It costs you nothing, but helps me keep bringing you all this awesome content for free. So uh, if you um, are so inclined, I very much appreciate it. So it's going to be fun, right? Don't you think that's going to be a pretty little Christmas forest? And then we're going to mask this. I'm going to ink it and put some either stencil the background or some flex with um i didn't add this either nat uh but the dina wakely gloss spray in white because i think this will make nice snow if we want to do that okay so let's do the things So like I said, I have a pencil and eraser. I like to use the Micron. It is permanent, but you have to let it dry for a second. So don't try to put water on it as soon as you sketch because you will pull a little gray, but it's so much fun. So I was just messing around and that's what we're gonna do. You can decide what kind of trees that you wanna do, but I was just doodling some trees, doing some things. And um, then when the watercolor started, I'm like, ooh, I love that I can just do the base of the tree and then um, the base of the tree and then I can just kind of add some watercolor to give it shape. So very excited. The process as I started playing the process uh, that started to come together. So friends, now use a pencil and eraser if you are so inclined. I am going to go right in with my black Micron. I like to use uh, the 05. 05, I love these Micron markers from Sakura. I think they are Sakura. I can't read it because I'm blind, but um, I love them. They're great for journaling, great for sketching. Hello, Kim. Kim is in Hawaii right now. So, uh, I hope you're enjoying your uh, very long vacation. It's kind of been awesome watching your travels. But hello, friend. Uh, what you want to keep in mind with these is what are you going to use them for? If you're going to use them on a scrapbook page, you can do bigger scale. If you're going to use them on a card, keep that in mind. If you want to use it on a tag, keep that in mind. If you want to just doodle them for fun the first time and then you can always redraw it once you kind of get your feet wet, then you do that as well. But the whole thing, do you want me to pull the camera in a little bit closer? Because we aren't doing um, like double page layouts tonight, right? So let me pull it so you guys can see a little better. Is that better? Let me tighten that. 
can't straighten it, sorry. But I think that'll be better, right? You'll be able to see a little bit better. Okay, gift tags, I love that idea. And here's what's so fun is that um, it doesn't matter what kind of crafter you are, right? If you are here, cause you just, hello Annette, hello my friend. Um, if you're just here tonight, because it seems like a fun thing and you're going to hang out, that's great. I don't know. I want to see if Kari's going to show up today. Kari goes in for her surgery tomorrow. So our V-Boo crew, we got to make sure that uh, if she does pop on, we give her lots of love because uh, tomorrow's a big day for her hip surgery. Um, but just kind of keep in mind what you're doing in the scale. So uh, oh, Kari is here. Hello, Kari. So our friend Kari is going in to have her hip done tomorrow. So sending her lots of love and um, quick healing vibes that it, it all goes off without any kind of issues. We will be thinking about you, my sweet friend. So when you were asking about what colors, and I might switch these out to regular, we'll decide, is I have Rustic Wilderness. I have Lucky Clover, Mowed Lawn, Pine Needles, Old Paper, and Forest Moss. I just grabbed a bunch of greens in regular distress. The reason I opted for regular distress instead of uh, Oxide is because I don't want when I'm watercoloring where Oxides, the inks will separate and oxidize. I want it to just be kind of a cleaner watercolor. You definitely could use just watercolor paints, uh, watercolor pencil crayons, whatever you have, uh, Crayolas, anything that's water soluble, soluble that will um, make a water paint will be perfect. But this is kind of the color palette. Pick any greens that you have. If you're like, what greens do I need? Well, whatever you have, right? So I am going to put these back and we're gonna just start doodling, just doodly do. Doodle up a bunch of trees and then um, we'll watercolor them, okay? So I wanna give you an idea. Remember, we've done this before and you really can go in and do anything that is a tree shape. So why don't we start with something that is like a diamond and I'm doing a pencil here just so you guys can see. So you can get sketchy, right? And just kind of do a triangle. I said diamond, I'm a liar, a uh, triangle, right? And then decide where the stem of that would be, right? It does not have to be perfect, but that's a great place to start, right? Great place to start, just like that. And then you can decide that, do you want like a chevron tree where you could just go like this and build um, like a chevron pattern, right? So I'm going to do this as kind of like a base. And then I can build on that. right and then to keep it really easy i don't try to make them perfect i find the sketchier they are the easier it is to draw it so i'm going to start at the top and pull towards myself and then just do like some wonky lines because that makes it way easier if i'm not trying to do just a straight line right some wonky lines we talked about this before some dots when you have to lift your pencil and you're afraid that you're not going to be able to line it up perfect wonky lines right so rich and i worked on something today but i don't have a version to show you but uh he asked me to make his sticker so kari got to see it i did design rich's sticker that will be going on packages that are mailed as soon as i can get it back so i'm gonna draw right I'm not doing perfect. I'm okay with this being very imperfect. You could use a ruler. I did grab my little ruler if I did want a straight line, but it is a sidecar sticker. It is with a dancing monkey. So it is coming. I designed it today and I will send them off to get printed. And then Rich is going to have his own sticker. So when you go to do your like chevron pattern, you could 
take it right outside and do it messy or keep it contained. You can decide, right? Just kind of a chevron pattern. Decide how tight. Like sometimes I do not even follow the original lines that I had. And I might do a double line on some of them, right? I just try to keep them on the same angle. But if you aren't keeping them on the same angle, that's totally fine too. This can be loose and fun. The biggest thing I want you to try is just doing it. Draw it and get a feel for doodling. It does not matter if they are perfect, especially when we go and add the watercolor on here. They do not have to be perfect. Right? And then you can do a couple different scales, right? So you could go in now and do a smaller one, a bigger one. And then when we're done and we paint them, you totally could make your own ephemera. So if you're comfortable doing it now, let's go like this and decide that we want one slightly smaller, right? So if I draw those lines, I know that I want to keep my triangle within that kind of parameter. And I'm going to go and do another one like that. Drawing it again. Get my line down the center. And actually, I think some of these might be fun. What if we stretch and really make the base a little bit more dramatic, right? So we could give these like a longer base, right? And then remember, just kind of make it a wiggly line, some dots if you want. So it's a little easier to draw. Yeah, I love it. Betty was saying that last time we did this, she made lots of these and added them to Christmas cards. Yeah, it is the perfect way that you could do this with your kids, with your grandkids at maybe a senior's. If you go to create Christmas cards with seniors or at school, if you're a school teacher, and you could even sketch them, photocopy them, and then they could color them in, right? If they're maybe the drawing part is not going to be as easy, then you could do this part and then share it with other people you're going to craft with. So I love that kind of. And then I like to do three. So you could go in and do like a third one. That one I'm totally going in. Like I said, friends, I don't even care if it's perfect because it doesn't have to be. And then do your chevron. But I have to go slow because sometimes when I go too fast, it turns out a little wonk. Because it is weird sometimes when I draw, I'm drawing it live, right? That um, they don't turn out as well as it would be if I was just kind of taking my time sketchy sketching. So this is going to be one style of tree. So are you all ready, Kari? I'm sure you are. She's so organized. I'm sure she's all packed and ready. Okay, so that's one style of tree. And then when the ink dries, I totally can erase it. Right? Why don't we do one too that's just like a doodly bubble like this? Like what if we do one that looks like, like a little doodly bubble? And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do the next layer like that. Now let's see, because I'm going in totally just off the cuff if it looks wonky or cute, <laughs> right? I'm 
all right with that, right? And then we could give that one a little thicker stem or stem trunk. And then I could come in here with my ruler if I want, just so I can find the center of it. Because that one is a little crazy. And then you can do, right, some little doodles in here that give it just kind of interest. So say you don't like what you did. Like maybe it's a little wonky. Then go in and just add some little doodles on top because we totally could add some stars and such. But I'm all right with it. It's one, right? If I don't like it when I'm done, I don't have to leave it like that. And just for fun, let's try another one, but I'm going to do it smaller. And I'm gonna go a little slower. So I'll do three. And maybe four here or five. Oh, this is a weird one. <laughs> this tree is not so pretty, I'm just going to say. But I'm not a quitter. We'll put it on there and see how that one turns out. This is the guy that threw it off, but I can cut him off. See, it's an appendage. He needs to have a surgery removal of that one. So watch, I'll even do that so I know I want to cut him off when I paint it. <laughs> I don't like his appendage. So it's coming. It's coming off that appendage. See? His weird little appendage. So there's a couple of trees. Now there's, I have a favorite. A favorite one, um, these ones. This one was like a favorite. So we're going to do a bunch of those. But let's do one that's almost a little Charlie Brownish, where it's going to be more watercolor than it will be um, doodled. So I'm going to just draw like this kind of scribbly stem like this. And then we're going to draw kind of like branches on this one, right? So just little tree branches. And then we can add our paint accordingly. Okay, so that one is just kind of a doodly doodly. And then all of the body of this tree is going to come more from the paint. But I might have a branch come down like this too to fill the bottom. And I might do a little smaller guy. There. Okay, so let's do a mate to that one. Any questions as we're going, friends? Right? Because now this one will build up as we put the paint on it. Right? So just still keeping it in that kind of, you know, like a tree is in a shape like that. The branches are tighter at the top and then go wider towards the bottom. So let's decide what else can we do right so let's do another one like this so i'm going to do this smaller but i know my tr my main trunk right is going to come up like this and then i'm going to do fewer branches but then I know down here right 
where the tree would go wider that I could add a few more. Okay. Can I use watercolors or your Vibu watercolor pen? Sure you can, but if you're going to use the pens, Lee, make sure that you're using them off the page first because they are incredibly, incredibly pigmented. Don't put them directly on the page, right? So now I want to get into the tree that I'm really excited to be making is uh, this one where it's kind of like a base of the branch, but most of the body will come from the watercolor. So let's start with one, uh, right? If I am going to be doing a four by six, four by seven ish card, it's probably a good idea to give myself a guideline as what the tallest tree I would want on there. So I know for sure no bigger than five inches, but probably like four and a half, no bigger than that. So I'm going to start with that as my, my guide. And again, I'm going to create the base of the tree, the trunk. And then I'm going to do just kind of, right, little branches like this. Some of them can be kind of like a curlyish cue. Some of them can be straight. Some of them can double up. Right? So you're just kind of building this base of the tree. You definitely can overlap them. But it's almost like a bottle brush tree. So let's say this one's going to end here. That's going to be as far down as I want to go. So I just want to give my width right? Again, you can create the diamond for yourself. So you know that you're building within that shape. That's probably a helpful tip, don't you think? Helpful tip, right? But not all the branches have to be that width, but let's do some that curl out, some that overlap, and you're doing almost like a bottle brush tree. Okay. And then you can make your trunk a little bit thicker, but not heavy per se. I still kind of like it to just be doodled. Okay. Not pretty at all. It looks like janky. I want it to be janky for a bottle brush tree. Oh my goodness. They always find us just a second. Let me block that person. We haven't had them for a while, have we? So I'm going to do a couple more now, but not as tall as that one. Okay. But I also want to do something that is just literally a branch. Okay. And it can actually be kind of broken up. Maybe even, or we just kind of do this. To kind of start to build. A tree. Okay. That one's almost off the page, but I'm good. So this one, yeah, bottle brush trees, right? It's so much fun. So when you look at it, this one was about four and a half inches. So I want to do one now, maybe three and a half inches. So we can use our pencil. Where do we want that? Right in the middle. 
You can always grab another piece of paper, but I'm going to try to do all of them just on this piece of paper. So three and a half, and then we could do a two, a three. Let's do throw up a three inch. So I have choices. And then how about a two and a half? Why not? Ish is fine, right? So these are my trees. I'm going to do a bunch like this because I really, uh, after I drew, I'm like, I freaking love that tree. So again, just kind of create your base. The messier it is, right? The easier it is. And you don't care. Like, look at, you don't have to draw a perfectly straight line. We don't have to draw a perfectly straight line. It is, anybody could. Like my mother says, I can't draw a straight line. Well, guess what, Shill? You could totally draw this one, right? So now we're going to go in and I'm going to start on this side. So I'm not dragging my uh, arm across the wet uh, marker. I'll start here and then make, work my way across. So every time you do one, it's a little easier. I want to make sure my branches are a little thinner at the top on this one because I went a little wide to start. And I want to make sure that this one is a little looser. Oh, do you remember? If you need it. Draw yourself a diamond so you kind of have an idea of what your width. This one's going to be a narrow tree. I'm going to do that one narrow. And then this one may be a little fatter, right? Just to give you an idea that I think is helpful is I eyeball those things, but I can't assume that everybody else just would, right? So there I want some curly ones where they kind of go in because we can always go in and add a few more, a double one, right? Because it's nice when you get like a little darker area in here too, right? So let's do my last one. And then they're going to kind of fill in. Even if it doesn't um, attach all the way to the trunk it's totally fine totally fine how we doing out there i'm i'm looking up any questions friends yes embrace the imperfection poppy a triangle did i say a diamond again i'm sorry triangle i just want to say diamond but um you want a little triangle just to give your idea of how it tapers from top to bottom but I love this. I think a lot of times what ends up happening when we do these, right, is um, you come in with the intention of I'm just going to watch or I'm here because Vicky said there's going to be a giveaway and that's why I'm here. And then what ends up happening is you guys go, well, maybe I can do this. This doesn't look too hard. I'm going to grab a pen and just kind of doodle them. And that's what happened last time. And we had tons of people that totally embrace this and we're drawing trees and they're like i never in a million years thought i had the ability to do this so don't um knock yourself out of the running just yet you're gonna find that these bottle brush kind of style ones were my favorite as i was doodling today i'm like oh i kind of really dig in this Right? Just don't go too heavy. Leave some open areas because you're still going to paint in here, right? So, yeah, I hope some of you guys are inspired to play tonight because it really is fun. See? And we haven't even put color on them yet. I missed the four trees in the top. How did you draw those? Um, just a diamond diamond triangle and then did it like a chevron what i would recommend is just kind of play along with what we're doing now and then you can the video's recorded right you can come back and watch it later i'm going to leave a little bit more open space in this one where i don't fill it with as many lines i want to see what it'll look like i think this one though needs a few more There. 
but I'm going to leave some open spaces from with from this tree with this one. I want to see what it looks like with less black when we go to paint, if that makes sense. But look at, I'm not spending a lot of time here. I do want to add a little bit to the base trunk. Any questions, friends? I'm looking at the uh, camera. Do, do. Yeah, it's a micron. Zero five. This is my favorite pen to journal, to write. So I think that's enough. And now what am I going to do? Erase my pencil lines. So again, my friends, you're going to know right now when you go to draw, if your pen was permanent or not. I would really test before you do this. Because if you test right now and your pen ended up being um, not waterproof, maybe you want to grab pencil crayons instead of uh, watercolor. So get rid of your pencil lines. And we're gonna paint. Cause we could just keep doing this. Like I'm telling you, I've decided I'm doing a drawing class, a doodling class in the new year with our mix, whole mixed media fun because there's so many things we could draw, right? Using my little glitter vac because I don't like the little pencil or eraser thingies. Because <laughs> they end up all, this mat is sticky, right? So let me do that again because I can see a few I missed. So just make sure you get your pencil lines after your ink is dry. Very good. And I love these. Super Eraser by Uni. Mitsubishi. Um, when I go, when I was in um, London, England with Chamel, she took me to an art supply store and I bought a whole bunch of um, basic things because I do love to draw. I do love to make art outside of paper crafting right hello lindsay how are you friend would love a doodle class yeah i think it'll be great and it'll be one of those like 25 bucks four lessons five lessons it'll be the value will be there okay so now what am i gonna do i'm gonna paint so what am i using uh or how am i creating my paint palette i have a sheet of plastic it's, it is through, we are memory keepers. I'm going to add those. I'm putting an order in tomorrow and I'm going to add that to my website, but you can, it's, they're out there. This one is a, we are one, but I just love it for cleanup. Um, this is a great stocking stuff I think too, if you have kids who love to draw, wouldn't they love to do this with their eraser bits at the end? I just like to use it. It's fun. Who doesn't like fun little toys? So for my paint palette now, so I have my water, it's still dirty. It's fine because it's just distress ink. I have a number 10, 12. This one's a number 12 uh, round brush. Your brush will make a difference in your painting. Some things you don't, and it's not a super expensive brush, but it's not a dollar store brush. Uh, I like a number 8, 10, 12, 14 with my round paint brushes you would like to have a paper towel handy so you can control your water by wicking it on your paper towel and then I just have a clear sheet of acrylic that I'm going to go in and pounce each color of distress ink I want to use like this and that's ooh, and that's how I'm creating Vicky's trying not to drop stuff right on my art my paint palette now why do I love this because Distress ink is not super expensive. It has multiple uses and it's water soluble. So I can go in and create 
if you're not ready to invest in a really good quality watercolor pad or set, not pad, set, then this is a good place to start, right? So I'm just pouncing them down on my piece of clear plastic and creating my little watercolor palette, right? Super easy. If you have Crayolas, so say you're watching and you're like, I, I just kind of found this thing. I don't even know who this lady is, but it looks like fun. Um, you could take a sheet of saran wrap or plastic wrap and you could use, you could be doing this with your kids and just scribble a Crayola on to something that's non-porous and add some water and it will turn into paint, right? Love it. So there are two different ways we could watercolor. You could watercolor where it is wet on dry, meaning I'd wet my paint and I'd paint on a dry background. I think wet on wet is way more forgiving where I go in and put a little bit of water down, not covering the whole space, but a little bit of water down on my drawing. And now I can go in and let's just go in with this green to start, which I don't even know what it is. Don't even care. Um, but I know somebody's going to ask me. I think that's old paper. This first one is old paper. And I'm just going to kind of float very loosely some watercolor into my triangle. Not even caring if I'm completely in the lines. I think it's more charming. And I'm not using a brown. I'm just going to stick with one color. So what colors? Old paper. Forest moss. Rustic wilderness. Mowed lawn. Lucky clover and pine needles. I literally just pulled greens that I have. You could go and do them all in the same color if you want. Or you could... I'm, I'm not going to mix color tonight. I'm keeping everything very pure. So if I want to add depth when this dries, I'll go back in with old paper, if that makes sense. I don't want to put two colors on here. You totally could if you want, but I'm not going to do that, okay? So I'm going to go in here with this because it's a little earthier, a browner green, which this one would be forest moss. And then let's see what we get. Oh, yeah, look at that. I'm going to put a little bit more water because it's a lot uh, deeper pigment. And I am just loosely, like I said, more water, less pigment. You get, and then I might add a little of that to maybe just the center. Okay. Go very loose to start, friends. We can come back and add detail, but we want wet on wet. That's why I'm putting some water down first. And what other one might look nice with these ones? Let's go with Rustic Wilderness. And we could make a new color by pulling that down. I could pull some Rustic Wilderness and then pull in, which I like that. I pulled a little bit of Rustic Wilderness with Forest Moss. And the reason being is the other green was a little too blue. See, that is a pretty blue green. So let's just throw a little bit more forest moss in there. Do we care if it's messy? No, adds to the charm. We could even do this if we want and flick a little bit of color in like this. Now, because it's wet, it's not going to stay as polka dots, right? But let's see what that looks like. And that is way more forgiving than trying to get your brush on there, right? So let's do that for now. Isn't that fun? So what I did is just tapped some of the darker color into that wet paint. And we'll just leave it. Let it dry. I'll tell you, I am not of the school of liking forest moss. See how yellow that is? Not my favorite. But I'll be okay with it. I will not use it again. Just so you guys know, guess what I'm doing right now? Because I can, is forest moss is being eliminated from my palette. I just don't want that yellowiness. So bye-bye forest moss. But if you like it, hey, use it. So let's see what we can do now with our bubble tree. 
what are we going to do with this bubble tree? I'm still going to put some water down, leaving white spaces too. I don't want to cover everything. Let's leave some wet or open spaces, no water. Okay, taking some of the water off my brush. I feel like this needs to be a pretty blue green. So I'm going to pull some Lucky Clover. Okay, and then let's just pull some Lucky Clover, almost like drips down my thing, my tree. Okay, I'm going to just, I'm putting, painting both of those with Lucky Clover to start. Okay. Oh, I did not put water in. So let me show you what happens when you do wet on dry. It will stay put and you could have a little bit more brush marks, but that's okay. Let's go with it. And then I'm going to leave some little open areas too. More pigment, drop it in. I did not put water on my brush, if you notice that. I'm just dropping the pigment in. Totally okay with it. Painting to start my stem the same color. Do we have questions? It is not as forgiving when you paint. Um, wet on dry. Who's tried it? Who's painted wet on dry? I don't need those right now. Thank you. I'm live, right? I'm Riley's bringing my pencil them. crayons down. I'm just going to place them down. Thank you. You didn't have to say anything. Okay, get out. That's not nice. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm going to put clean water on here. What happens when we tap some clean water into our paint? So it's going to kind of tie dye. It's groovy. And then let's leave it to dry. Right? Leave it to dry. I'm going to do it on forest moss too. Because remember, not a fan forest moss. Let's wick some of that color out. So this is just clean water. So what happens? And guess what I'm going to do? See how dark it is up in that corner? I know that water's pooling there. I lifted it. That makes me much happier. Just lift it off. So these ones now, we're going to go in and make it a tree. It's almost going to look a little Charlie Brownish. So let's go in with this one with trying not to put my arm in it. I think this is pine needles. So I'm going to start... And I'm only going to put some water at the tips of the branches, but a lot on the bottom. So all of the base of the tree will have a lot of paint. But up the um, body of the tree and near the top will have less. So I'm just kind of depositing some water. If you're working on watercolor paper... This wet on wet is kind of magic. You paint wet on dry. And how is it working for you? Do you want to know, Leslie, when I paint wet on dry is when I want the detail. I paint wet on wet to get the base of the color. And now for the next step, when I come back and revisit, I paint wet on dry. And that's where I get more of the details. When I'm going in just to lay my base down, I paint wet on wet. And then I'll paint wet on dry when I want to go in and add detail. So see, I'm just going to drop some pigment in here. Remember, there is a lot. And I'm tapping my brush. Tapping my brush. Tapping the brush. So this is, I don't even know what kind of pine this one would be. But this one is more of a, like, um, the branches aren't really full. 
I'm going in for kind of a less full look. Okay. So to get my first color down, it's going to be like this. And then I can add some detail. Okay. So see what I did with this one? Tapping, tap, 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 wet and wet. Really want to control the amount of water in your brush. Right? So this next one, let's go in with, uh, I'm going to go with the same color to start. Oops, I didn't put my water down. Did you notice that? So let's put some water in here. More on the base. Right? If your brush is really wet, just wick it on your paper towel. See what happened? Ooh, sucked all the moisture out. Dot, dot, dot. I'm just depositing my pigment in, in polka dots. Let the water direct it where it's going to go. Just let that water that is floating in because you're painting wet on wet. Let it just kind of wick out. Magic happens, friends. Magic happens. Just let it wick out. When you paint wet and wet, we can come back dry on uh, wet on dry after. But right now, watch the magic that's going to happen. And I'm even drawn some places where there's not even branches. Because we can, right? Oh, I love that one. It's my favorite. And I'm taking some of this where it kind of pooled. And where I didn't get any here. Soften it a little bit. I love this one. <sighs> love it. Love it. Okay. So we're going to do kind of the same thing on this, these guys. Kind of the same thing. So let's go in for this tall one. I want to use. So just kind of drop, drop some water in there. Drop it like it's hot. Okay. It's not soaking wet. I'm not putting a ton of water down. Just a little bit. It's way more forgiving when you paint wet on wet. Totally your choice, but try both, okay? So now I'm going in with some yummy mowed lawn. Oh, let's just drip it in. Look at that. Watch that wick out. Do not force that around a lot. Just let it dot, dot, dot. Leave some where you aren't even filling out the whole branch. Just to start... Get some of that water out. I know my brush was too wet, too hard to control. Look at that. Dot, 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 friends. I will show you. I'll hold this up. Dot, dot, dot. Polka dots of paint. Building in. Less is more. You can always add, but you can't take away. So don't go in too heavy to start. You want it to look modeled. Oh, I love that. You ready? Look at, can you see that? Dot, dot, dot. Really loose. Leave some white space. Leave some white space. I'm telling you, the bottle brush trees were my favorite. I started playing and that one was my favorite. I agree, Lisa. It was my favorite. And you guys could paint this on a freaking canvas. This could, this could be a gift for somebody, right? It's very pretty. So what color do I want to go in? I think I'm going to go in with this one, which I believe is Rustic Wilderness. This is a newer green from Tim. So I'm going to go on this tree because this was going to be like kind of the second height. There's a lot of water in here. Let's see what happens. You don't want it too wet. Remember, I just said I could feel it. I put a lot of water in there. Very dark pigment. 
So if you're like, ooh, I don't know, I'm scared, put some more water in it. More water, less pigment. <sighs> Look at that. Just let it go down. Oh my goodness, let it wick out. Pull it out. Right? Just pull that out. Oh, it's so feathery. It looks like this beautiful Christmas tree. And stop. When you like it, just kind of leave it. Because you can go in and add some detail after, friends. Oh, I love that one. You ready for it? Oh, we have a lot tonight of uh, crazies. See Look how pretty that one turned out. And this one was with rustic wilderness. So let's go in with um, old paper on this guy. Again, watch the amount of water. I'm going a little heavy and it means I have less control when I go to add my paint. So I'm gonna go in with old paper. Dot, dot, friends, bring the paint in the middle, pull it out, pull it out, right? So add the paint. I'm looking like, you know how branches just kind of feather out of the tree like this? So I'm starting from the middle and I'm just pulling the dots out, okay? Oh, so much fun when we bring Tim Holtz to the party. I love Distress Ink. You don't have to have always super expensive watercolor paint, right? We can do some majestical things with what we have. Do we have any questions, friends? Let me know if you have any questions as I'm painting through here. Darcy, you don't need to be a painter. We literally scribbled these trees. And all I'm telling you to do is dot, dot, dot the paint. And here, when you ask me um, what my feedback would be, wet on wet. I really think if you are newer to watercolor paint, it's way more forgiving. Here, I'll do this last one dry. Here, I'll do this one dry because I, I want to make sure I have a bevy of uh, watercolor or uh, bottle brush trees here. So um, I ran out of paper. So I'm going to do this one wet. Again, my page is not sopping wet. It's just a little bit of water to pull your paint through a little bit more. Okay. What color should we use for this one, friends? Pine needles? Did I do? I think uh, we did old paper. We did rustic wilderness. Let's do this, this bluey green one. So I will. I'm going to go into pine needles, okay? It's a little dry. Going to add a little bit more water. I'd rather light to start. You can always add, but you can't take away. So leave white space, don't cover everything. Right, and you guys can do these. Do you remember when we did this last year? Now I did a little different trees, they were different, but you guys who decided to be brave and tried it were like, oh my goodness, I can't even believe what I made, I'm shocked by it. And we did it with flowers. So definitely give it a try friends. Cause I feel like you can make some magic. Do the little dots though, right? So it looks on some of the ends, just like, um, that's really wet down there. So I'm pulling that pigment in. Okay. Now let's go revisit some that are dry. 
So I used, I think, this color. So I'm going to go in dry now. Wet on dry and add some detail. Because now this will give a layer that's darker because it's on top of the dry. So I'm going to put less pigment down. But I am painting with wet on dry. Ran out of some of that, so we'll go into another color. And you can always paint with a little bit of water too. You don't have to put pigment in, right? And if you're thinking, ooh, that's a little darker than I wanted, just go in and add a little bit of moisture. So I'm painting into the white areas too. Okay, now that gives me a little depth. It gives me a little depth, the Charlie Brownies. Charlie Brown trees. And I could go in even with, right in here with a little bit of the darker greens because that's where there'd be more depth in the tree, right? In the bottom branches and stuff. So if we want to, to build a little bit of the base there. And we can do little things like tappy taps. Especially when they're dry, right? Like when I tap water into what's already wet, you're not going to get. A ton of uh, business going on. So this I'm going in with a darker color. And I'll even put a little less on this guy. But do you see what I'm doing? Like circles, just little dots of pigment. Not brush marks or brush strokes. I'm just going to kind of go with that. Leave it for a little bit to dry. I'm fine with these ones the way they are. I'm not even going to do anything. Let's see what we can do with these hot messes. <laughs> I'm going to go in with the, and just make these like very kind of watercolory. So I'm just adding very loosely some mode lawn. Really loose. even outside around. We'll see what these turn into. Might not, they might not be pieces of um, magic. And remember, I'm not a lover of this green. So I might go in with now and add like detail, the darker green. and really play up that kind of chevron bit. See? Let's go with the blue one on this one. Oh, I kind of dig in that, friends. And take some water and soften those lines a little bit. I love that. 
See, don't give up. I love that. The size brush I'm using is a 14, a 12. It's a 12. We got to let that dry and we're going to add a little bit more detail in there. But let's go in now and build up a little bit, a second layer on these guys. Okay, so I'm going to go in same color. I'm not messing around. I'm going to use the same color. These are going to be very monochromatic. So this one was the mode lawn. And I'm going to just go in and add some little dots. Like this. Use the tip of your brush. Use the side of it. Just kind of get a feel for it. That's a little heavy up top. So guess what I can do? Boop. Take some of that out. I used a little bit more. I need some more paint. You definitely can watch whenever you can, right? You must have needed to give your eyes a rest, Terry. So it will still be here when you are ready to come back and watch it. You must need your sleep. Right? So it will be here. These are all recorded. So I'm just going in with the same color. Um wet on dry now again just kind of tapping just to give these a little bit of depth okay and they would be a little darker down here right at the base of the tree and then we can cut them out Don't overdo it. And like I said, you can always go in and lift some color too with adding some water on your brush. And you can take pigment away in some of those areas if they're a little too dark. I also love to just pull some of that color out. Okay, leave it alone and move on. Hi, Cheryl, how are you? So which one was this? Old paper, I think. So that one, remember, I'm not a lover of those brownie greens. So I'm going in on this one with, um, with the uh, mode lawn. So let's pull out like a little bit more blue green in what we have here. Totally personal preference. You might be like, Vicki, I totally love that color. Then leave it, right? Just because I don't like it doesn't mean that um, you have to or you don't or aren't allowed. What am I trying to say? Right? You do you. Whatever works. If you are like, oh, I love that color, then just stick with it. But I'm loving that contrast, my friends. Look at that. I love that contrast on there. I'm totally digging this tree too. I don't want to do much to it. Oh, digging that one too. So let's just add, I got to remember what colors I use. What color did I use for this? I think it was Rustic Wilderness, right? I think this one was Rustic Wilderness. So I want it to be wet, but not tons of water on my brush. So let's just add, ooh, I don't know if it was, but because this is a pretty blue green going on on here. And the green I just used is pretty yellow, but I think we'll be okay. I'm going to just go with it now. It was not that it was pine needles. I'm 
but it's actually looking really cool. You can add some pine needles after that one dries. Oh, I love it. But let's go in with Rustic Wilderness on the Rustic Wilderness one. Tapping again. Building some depth. I have hardly any of that ink left, so. And when you cut these out, oh, they're so pretty. See, just kind of making it look like pine branches, almost like little lines. So it's for where it's all kind of bubbly, we're taking that bubbly away. See how pretty? So see, I went in with another color on top of that blue and I'm really digging it. Let's pull some of that dark line out. Oh, I love it. So yeah, you could totally go in with a little darker. I'm going to go a little darker on that one. So I'm putting a little rusted wilderness because I was all out. Just a tip of water. I'm not dipping my whole brush in, right? And then just putting a couple of dabs of that dark. That is really dark in there. I think it'll be okay. And turn your page if you're not getting, like I love the brush stroke I just got there, but I'm not getting it on that side. So I'll turn my page so I can, right? I just like the look of, like I'm using my brushes almost dry and just tapping it down and getting the little kind of draggy marks to look like. I've got to break that up now a little bit because I'm following a little bit too closely to the bottle brush bits. There. Okay, very fun. And I'm just gonna add a little depth to this one. So we'll take some of that and mix it with a little bit of this. And put just a little depth in there. So did you guys wanna see where I paint this one over here totally uh, dry. This one here totally dry. Okay, this tree is dry. I have not put water down. So when I go in and maybe I want to give it that tree look, do you see how like every line I draw, you can see, you know what I mean? So the difference with, but let's force that like a zigzaggy tree. Um, when it's wet, you don't have lines, right? You would not get that kind of line of the tree because it would be flowing into the water. You don't have that hard edge. So it's just a little bit different. I find if you're newer to watercolor, the only time I really paint um, 
dry, wet on dry is if I'm going to put detail in. But there again, that's totally your preference. And if I wanted it to look like I was painting branches, right? Because once it's on there, you can't rub that off now. You, I cannot remove those hard lines because it soaks right into the paper, okay? So again, totally personal preference, but I feel like make sure you give it a try just so you can see what options that you have. Let me do one more with a little bit of mode lawn. I just want to put a little mode lawn into my little Charlie Brown looking trees because really digging those. But I want hardly any water and just pigment. So I can go in here now and do where it just kind of looks like a whole different green kind of in polka dots on this tree. And I will show it to you when it's dry. Totally loving that. Let's do a little on this one too. Just breaks it up. A little bit more water. Sorry, friends, that um, when I'm painting, right, it's a whole different Vicky. Because I'm just concentrating a little bit. Love it. Absolutely love that. Okay, I am going to press my paper towel into here, though, to take some of the pigment out. I want this one to be a little lighter. And it's very dark right in that center. So let's see what happens if we, because it's water reactive, right? This is distress ink. So we could lift a little bit of that out by putting some water drops in and then lifting the pigment. So we're going to add lightness into it by lifting the pigment. So see what it looks like right now. And I'm going to show you when I press my paper towel on. So I'm going to actually watermark and lift oh might not might have been too wet when i did it but we'll try some of that pigment and when we'll see it i'll go in with a heat gun and see if i can get it to work sometimes if my ink is too wet it won't really work but we'll try it with the heat gun <gasps> sorry did you see that flashy light it's because I have it plugged into one of the outlets I don't usually use. So let's get that water to eat a little bit of that paint. So I'm just giving these a quick blast so that we can cut them out. You could go in brown if you want brown um, for your uh, trunks. Try not to bake them like a cookie. Just get most of the moisture out so we can cut them out. Because I find when you cut these out, a whole different ball of wax too. And I'm okay if they get buckly because I'm cutting them out. Okay. Thanks, Karen. And here's my thing. I'm going to see if I can't lift some of that pigment. We'll see. Let it sit for a second. Just to break it up because a lot it got a little solid but no it's because it's watercolor okay i get the wet dry thing thanks vicky writing notes for myself you'll see it's just a little bit more forgiving all right Yes, we are applying, implying that you might try to do too much too soon, Kari, because I know you. I'm hoping Jared ties you to that lazy boy 
or the cat won't get off your lap the whole time. You need to rest and recover, my friend. If I was closer, I'd be coming over and rubbing your feet. The bottle brush are your favorite. I really did like them. But watch when we cut them out. It's a whole different kind of magic. So just take these now. Which one do you want to see me cut out first? Do you have a preference on here? Oh, here. Can we... I want to show you something. What do I have here that I can use? So remember I told you that I had some of the Dina Wakely gloss spray. I'm not going to spray it. I'm going to tap it. Hopefully I can. Add some little snow dots. Oh, watch. Don't snow dot your shirt like I'm doing right now. It's not shaking up very well. That's great news, Valerie. So after a week of recovery, she's feeling good. I hope that's for Kari so she can enjoy Christmas with Jer and the girls and her family that she too is quickly recovering in a week. So I'm just putting some snow on these ones because I think that that's a fun little thing. And that also breaks up some of those little thick centers. I don't want to spray though, right? Because if I spray, I can't really control what I'm getting. So I'm going to have to heat that a bit before I dry it. But I did put a couple flecks of snow. Let's do it on the bubble trees too. <laughs> so you could make snow dots. The reason I'm using gloss spray, the Dina Wakely stuff here is it's very opaque. You could use gesso that's watered down. You could use some acrylic paint. But you need something that has a lot of opacity. Otherwise, you're not going to even see it on here. Ooh, I'm loving my bubble trees with a little snow on them. Even though everything, if I had a cat, the cat would have white dots on it right now. Okay, Vicki, pull back on the snow. One more. There. Now, let's give this a dry. And then we'll cut them out. I will show you guys what that looks like. Ooh, I think my Charlie Browns need some too. I might as well just snow everything. Yeah, I want to be able to see through it, right? So all my trees are, we're in a tundra. My trees are not in Puerto Rico or Peru. <laughs> I don't know, though. I don't know in mountainous areas in these places, do they get snow? Or is the climate just too warm? There's no snow. Everything's getting snowed. And I didn't mean the mountainous in uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to dry it. I didn't put it on these ones, but I did on everything else. Wipe it. It's probably in my hair. So I just put some white dots on here. Let's see what they look like. Because I didn't shake this bottle very well. I can tell a lot of the paints at the bottom. But I'm loving that the dots of texture and because it is um, Dina Wakely's gloss spray, it has like a little bit of texture to it almost.
but like I said, I didn't shake it very well. I totally get that. Even if you're in a hotter climate, sometimes you, right? You're like, you're okay to have the snow. It's a conversation I've had with friends in Puerto Rico and such. It's that uh, Christmas is hard, right? Because, or in um, Australia or New Zealand where the seasons are opposite ours, right? I would happily do two layers of this. Because like I said, it is uh, got some dimension to it. The gloss. And remember I told you guys that um, mine wasn't dry or shaken enough. So we'll see. I might put a couple of dots on here after. I see a technique in this too. So be watching for it. I, I can see something magical could happen. And it's gloss spray. So these are shiny dots. It's kind of magical. So with that, I'm nervous that it's not, it's going to take a bit to dry. So can you see that? They're shiny. They're dry but they see the gloss because it's a gloss spray. <gasps> really kind of digging that. So now I feel like I have to do one more layer, but really shake that up so I can get more paint in it because it's just the um, binder, but a lot of the white wasn't in there. Let's see. Oh yeah. Now there's a little bit more white in there. So I'm doing one more layer with the white. Actually is interesting now, right? Because I have two shades, just the clear ones. And now we'll have a couple white dots and then we'll cut it out. So my idea with all of these, right, is that we make the art and then I'm going to turn the art into something. So I have so many of these that I could do a tag. I could do, um, cause I want to do tag art. We talked about that, right? But I also would love to do a card or maybe an L a page for my album. I'm spraying this stuff everywhere, just so you know. So if you guys do spray it everywhere, know you're not alone. No, you're not alone. Because Vicky is doing it too. Uh, but really digging this. Just so you know, thank you, Dina Wakely. I am loving your gloss spray as snow. Got to be a better way though. There. Just got to get enough pressure. Okay, it's enough, Vicky. <laughs> yes. I am the singing crafter because like I told everybody in my class on the weekend, I always have a soundtrack in my mind. There's always some kind of music playing. So because the acrylic nature of this glossy um, spray, when you heat set it, it does bubble. So just know that there's like some little polka dotties in here. We're kind of digging it. When I hold this up close, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I feel like um, magical things could happen with this, that there's going to be a built-in technique with this. So the point I'm making is it takes a little bit to dry, right? Because it is kind of acrylic-y. So heat is not really its friend. But I'm very impatient, so we're doing it anyway. You have a soundtrack in your mind too. I've always got some kind of music playing. Can you guys see that? <gasps> Look at, 
I love it. Just make sure you really shake the bottle. Okay. So fingers crossed. I can cut it out. And here's the thing. Every time you do these, you'll get better at it. So when I go in, I'm going to wonky cut it. I don't want straight cuts. I want it to look like the wonky painting. Right? So around that open area there. And then kind of in the branch and around the branch. Turning my paper, not my scissors. Look how pretty. Do you see the magic that ends up happening now when you cut these out? So you could totally paint like a set of uh, three on the back base of a card. You don't have to do it like a die cut. But look at already. Isn't that kind of magical? Look what we just made. Totally in a dome shaker card. I love it. Let's remind me of that. And I can save it when we do the shaker card. Uh, because we are doing a shaker. That is one of my. I will be doing these every Friday and Wednesday until the 23rd. And um, I have a whole bunch of different stuff planned. If you have never done printmaking with a gel plate. It will be a very gel plate basics. But definitely check us out on Friday at 8 o'clock because it's going to be magical. So I can't stay for much longer. I said to Natalie, the most I'm going to make these is two hours. So um, because, like, it takes a while, right? If you watch a video where it's not live, we would speed all of this up. Like, whoever, the creator, would speed it up. Well, because we're doing it live... It's not sped up, so you have to watch the drying time and the painting time. I freaking love that. Can you see it? <gasps> How fun is this? How fun is that? Is there one? Do you want me to cut one of the Charlie Brown ones out? Because even these ones, when you look at them, we could add snow on it, but see how pretty it's going to be now? Seriously. So let's do one of the Charlie Browns. Let's see what it looks like. Because we have not, look at, we can decorate our trees with some like little half, sorry, I gotta. Sequins, whatever you want to put on there. Look at, it's going to be fun. Now I might want the base to be longer so i'm going to make sure i cut accordingly oh my goodness this is going to be so cute so cute uh friends you know seriously make sure that you give this a try what do you got to lose it's a piece of paper and your time if it doesn't turn out, try it again. Put some stamps on it. Like to me, I don't see why everybody's trees are going to turn out beautifully. I just know they are. Don't be hard on yourself. Enjoy the process of making them and understand they're not meant to be perfect. Look how cute this is. Seriously. So I could paper piece a little pot and totally put it in a pot. I love this. You're going to make some beautiful trees, Karen. Really, because this is what ends up happening. A lot of people will just like hang out and watch because they're like, eh, nothing on TV. I kind of found this lady or you already know who I am on YouTube or on Facebook. And you're like, okay, this is interesting. I'm going to watch. You watch me make them and you're like, okay, I think maybe I feel like I could do this too. And then you give it a try. Who out there is making these right now? Who's like kind of doodling anyway? Just kind of sketched a few out just to see if you could do it just with a pen. You can do the things, friends. 
drawing a lot of it is literally just practice practice and play all your learning comes from working on the things that you feel need to be corrected right you're in new zealand hi beverly i have lots of friends in uh new zealand me on the couch with my watercolors i love it angie i can't wait to see what you make did a whole page loving it ah anyone out there doing it and thought oh i'm gonna play along because what do i got to lose it's just a piece of paper my time and are actually amazed by what you're creating i love this so remember i am cutting it longer in case i want to doodle a longer stem not a stem a base yeah see like that Beep. well and don't forget i don't normally come on on a wednesday right some of you are like what is she doing on here this isn't Friday, although I thought it was when my kids were complaining about where supper was. I'm like, come on, it's Friday. We never eat this early and then realize, oh, it's Wednesday there. Look at friends. Look how fun these are going to be. And you could do like a whole forest at the bottom of a scrapbook page if you wanted to. Right. You could line up a whole forest of these. I absolutely love them. Let's cut out the one that we weren't sure about, this bulbous tree. Let's cut out a bulbous one. Make sure when you're cutting them out too that you don't try to cut one tree out of the whole page. Like cut the, the shape out and then cut it detaily, if that makes sense. Because... Um, it's too hard to manage with a big sheet of paper. Let's try this one. I'm in love with these two. So I totally love how these turned out. See, I'm not doing it perfect. Just like we didn't draw it perfect. Even these are super cute. And think you could decorate it or puts paint proper snow on it. You could do some gold embellishments in it, on them, whatever I'm trying to say. I said the bulbous one and then I did this one first, but I love that one. See, by highlighting the chevron in it, it's very, very fun. Oh no, COVID is in your house, I'm sorry. That's not fun. And write the colors on the back of the tree. That's a great idea, right? But these would be very easy for you if you haven't made any kind of Christmas cards or maybe you're going to a party and you have a gift to bring. You totally could uh, make a tag out of these. Glitter snow, yes, and glitter glaze. I have tons of it. I have all of the Tim Holtz ones. So I could totally go through and do that after. And watch, I will, probably on the bulbous ones, I might add, but I am loving this gloss, right? I have tons of this to add to my store. So be watching for it. It's going to come. I just, again, it's one Vicky doing all the things. So after teaching for, I don't know, how, how many hours live was I this weekend? So I did my Evergreen and Holly class. It was awesome. We had the best time. But I was on there live for mm, 20 hours. 20 hours or so. It was kind of crazy town. But it was awesome. So now, right, is just uh, trying to catch up on all of the things. I love this tree now when I cut it out. This little um, Barba Papa tree, right? He is so cute. Or she could be a mama tree and a baby tree. Totally digging it. 
And that's why I love watercolor because the looseness of it and how it just flows and is so soft and pretty really adds. Look at how cute that is. You didn't think it was at first, did you? Thanks, Kari. I almost just cut my hair. Just so you know, I had the scissors up beside my head and I closed them. I almost cut my hair. I love this little bulbous tree that I didn't think I liked before. It's so cute. So cute. So let's cut the little baby one out. Don't you think? Aren't you surprised? And I think the little paint dots on it adds that little layer of mystique. Love it. Oh, remember, we have to do surgery here. I'm cutting the appendage off because it ruined this tree. So let's see what happens. Oh, much better with that growth. I had to remove its growth. Was not cute. Cute with gnomes. Yes, I was like, if we, if I would have done all the drawing, we would have been drawing gnomes too. And then I'm like, well, I can't now because I already posted what we're doing for this month. So we'll have to save it. But yeah, I was going to teach you guys how to draw some gnomes. Some wreaths, some greenery, and then went, okay. Really already, I think I'm a little bit crazy that I'm doing all of these lives because I really should be taking a break. People were emailing me like, uh, what are you doing? You crazy lady. Like you should be probably taking a break. And I'm like, ah, break, make, break, make. So this is what I'm going to be doing. And I will be sharing my finished project with you guys. So remember, this is not the finish. It's going to go on here and what I want to do is mask this mask it I don't know where my masking stuff is but I'm going to mask this like this I'm going to try to make it straight but who knows if Vicky can or not who, oops, who knows? I'll try to add it straight-ish. Let's see. Pretty straight. Pretty straight, Vicki. Mm, whatever. I'll just do... Oops. I think I'm going to have to come in like this. See all that? And then I took it off anyway because I need to cover right into that bit. There. And there. This is going to be the base of where I'm going to put my trees. Well, Julie... Um, all of these are going on a three by four card. So this white piece is three inches. The black one is three and a quarter. Is that helpful? And I can see through the yellow. So I think it's straight enough. Maybe not. Good enough. Okay. So I want to go in with Stormy Sky. Oh, I don't want to use Oxide. I was going to use Oxide and then I decided, ah, do I? Let's just go for it. We're going to Oxide it. Okay. I'm going to Stormy Sky. I'm going to make this almost like a night sky. Okay. So we're going to put a little stone in the sky. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera, friends, but I'm 
ink blending is going to happen. So my trees are going to be in the nighttime. So this is Stormy Sky Oxide Ink. I'm not finishing the whole tag with you tonight, but I do want to show you what I'm doing. And then I will photograph it so you guys can see. I need to change my blending tool. Good night, my friend. See you later, Margie. Um, that's what I'm saying. That's I, We're going to be wrapping it up because I promised myself I wasn't going to go too late doing two of these a week. I'm going to go in with a little Uncharted Mariner and around the edges just kind of look at kind of making it uh, like a little nightish sky. It's going to be so pretty. I really want Tim to come out with an even darker navy. I'm hoping that happens eventually. If um, Ranger will let them come out with more. I'm going to go in now with, if I can find it, Uncharted Mariner in regular distress if I know where I put it okay that's not happening oh there it is I thought I lost it okay I'm gonna go in with regular distress on top of my oxide yes post your trees for sure on the Vicky Booten creative community group don't forget um, Silver Bells is my song. So, or post your favorite Christmas song. Maybe that will be our thing. So you don't need to talk about it. Just in your comment for the giveaway, we want you to post your favorite Christmas song. That will be our first, um, thing that we're going to do. So in the regular comment section, not here. In the regular comment section on uh, YouTube, and then I'm going to post a new post for the giveaway. And I will show you in a second what the giveaway is going to be for this one. So what I'm going to do on this quickly now is watermark it. So I am just going to put some little dots in the background. We're going to pick that up. And then that's very bright, right? So we will just go over that now. Again, to tone that down, to just kind of look like a snowy sky. Blast with my heat gun. Don't post here. And understand that the giveaway is for Canada the, in the U.S. unless you are willing to pay the postage for other places in the world. I will do a access only as well on one of these, but it will be on Facebook, will be a whole separate post right? Oh, I love that. Look how fun is that, friends? I should have left my thing on to put some of the snow on here, but I took it off. I will show you closer, but let's put some of these white dots. 
look like snow. Ooh, I almost dumped the whole thing. Did you see that almost just happen? But I'm turning the direction, so my snow dots switch it up a little bit. Let's heat set that. So this whole card is not going to be going on my tag, right? I will cut it down to fit. Vicky, fingernails. And I haven't cut all my trees out, but I want to give you an idea of what this is going to look like. So remember, if you have patience, it's actually better to let this just dry. And it did warp a little bit, but we will flatten it. So the idea when this goes on is I'm going to layer it on here like this. And then I'm going to put trees on here and they're going to be three dimensional. I'm going to put some kind of banner across it. And this is all going to go on top of a pocket. So I might wrap it with twine. I will share my finished card. But you get, right, whatever trees I decide to use are going to be layered on my tag. So I'll show you the ones I originally cut out because it gives you an idea. It's going to go like that. Right? That is what I'm going to do and decorate this. And it is going to be, this could go on a card if you wanted it to, right? Or um, like I'm going to do, which is going to be a front of a pocket. It's going to go on the front of a pocket. So that gives you an idea, right? I'm moving them all around, but it's not dry in the background. And this isn't exactly the one that I'm going to do. But to give you an idea, whoop, I'm going to still decorate it. I will show you the finished tag when it's done. But I'm going to cut it down. I might put like a little white uh, snow on the bottom so my trees have something to rest on. There's going to be a banner on here. There's going to be twine wrapped around it. And it's all going to go on the front of a top opening little pocket that's going to go in my little sleigh and this will be one card i probably i'm going to make two different cards out of my trees because remember i want 12 it's going to be kind of the 12 days of christmas and i'm going to take a bunch of photos and add it on there i want to show you what's in the giveaway so you get to see that they're, they're going to be awesome this week or this month so it's going to be good though when i finish it right but it's going to be good Oh, look at that hole. Like I could, oh, I might put 10 million trees on my little taggy. But this is what's going to be in this giveaway. I'm going to post these that are signed by my friend Tim Holtz, 2015. You guys remember these, one of his biggest selling stamps, I think. Um, a whole bunch of Distress and Oxide. There is this set as well. I have, and I think I'm going to add one more surprise. You just aren't going to know what it is. And then look at, you can make shaker boxes out of these. I love them. Tags and a set of dies. It is a biggie. So this is what the giveaway is going to be. I will take a picture of it and post it. So remember, here is how you can have more chances to win. It's going to be posted on my Facebook artist page. I am going to post it. Well, here you can leave a comment when the it's the video is no longer live. And you can leave a comment here as well for a second opportunity to put your name in the draw. I'm going to turn the camera around now. 
every day when I go live, every Wednesday and every Friday, I'm going to be doing a different giveaway. Here I come. Hi. So I'm going to be doing a different giveaway tonight because we used Ranger and Tim Holtz is going to be a Tim Holtz inspired. If I, you know what, this is what the other thing's going to be in there. I think I have these to sell in the store. If I do, I'm going to add one of those too. So that will be the prize pack. Uh, again, just tell me what your favorite Christmas song is. Do not tell me here. It will be a separate post on Facebook, just a still post, not the video. And if you're on YouTube, it has to be in the regular comment section under the video when it's no longer live, not in the live chat. I am going to be doing a different, there's, and there's some huge giveaways. One of them is like the last one on the 23rd is going to be access or the kit to the weekend for print shop. So that whole kit, if you've bought it already, you will just, it's going to, I'm going to give you a credit to my store and you can either buy that or whatever you want, but you can get access to print shop with the whole kit or use it for my next class. If you already purchased that and then, oh, I have lots of stuff like a Vicky's favorite things is one of the giveaways. And there's going to be a whole bunch of things in there. I put my favorite chocolate bar. It's, it's a big, that's a big one. So keep watching for it. There's going to be every Wednesday and Friday up until the 23rd. I'm going to be here making something with you guys. I don't want these to be four hour lives. So I'll make the project on its own and then just share a picture of it. But I want to show you the technique part. And uh, it's going to be so good. So thank you as always for joining me. If you were here for the first time tonight, welcome new friend. And um, I will see you on Friday night for gel plate. I'm going to be using my gel plate. You need to have something that will mask or stencil a snowflake or stars. You could do stars too um, and acrylic paint. And we're going to do something super magic to make a background and then layer other uh, prints to do a total mixed media layered background with gel plate prints. So that is going to be Friday. And if you don't have a gel plate, you can just do the kissing technique and layer stencils. So there's where there's a will, there's a way. So as always, thank you so much, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure if you haven't already that you join the Vicki Booten Creative Community Group page on Facebook. And I want to see your trees. I want to see what you did, what you make out of them. So make sure you come and join us over there. Um, there's going to be something good in there too, maybe during this holiday season some kind of giveaway in there too because you could only win that if you are a member of the group page so see you later friends have a wonderful um evening and i'll see you on friday night 8 p.m eastern time for the gel plate printing thanks so much friends see you later